In today's video, we'll set up the GeekPi P33 developed by 52Pi, which is an M.2, NVMe, and PoE Plus hat. That is, it's a board that you can install to your Raspberry Pi 5 and can be powered entirely from your PoE switch and include support for adding an M.2 NVMe SSD all in one convenient kit. We'll go through the software setup, a common issue that new owners may run into, and we'll install the hat into an aluminum 52 Pi 5 case that fits it perfectly. My reasons for purchasing these components were to set up a dedicated N8N server on my network, which we covered in the video linked above. I simply plug it into an Ethernet port on my switch and remote connect to it when needed. For this use case, it's a perfect solution, and I'm sure you'll have your own ideas on how you would like to use it. Let's dive in. I'm John, and welcome to Wagner's Tech Talk. We'll set up the GeekPi P33 that includes an integrated PoE and NVMe hat for the Raspberry Pi 5. If you have a switch that supports PoE or power over Ethernet, that means you can fully power the Pi using only the Ethernet cable. No USB-C power adapter is needed. This kit also includes support for an M.2 NVMe SSD, which supports 2230, 2242, 2260, and 2280 size drives. Once fully assembled, we'll install it into the 52Pi Raspberry Pi 5 case, which is a solid aluminum case. Of course, we will also want to take advantage of the faster speed of the M.2 SSD, so we'll also install an SP512 gigabyte NVMe drive. Both the hat and the case will include the active cooler, so you will at least wind up with one extra if you decide to pick up the hat and the case. I already have an active cooler installed on this Raspberry Pi 5. It's easy to assemble. Just plug in the fan cable with the yellow wire facing outward, remove the protective backing, and push the pegs into the Pi 5. We'll start with the hat. As mentioned, it comes with an official Raspberry Pi active cooler, a hardware kit, two FFC cables, which we'll talk about more in a moment, and a Phillips head screwdriver to put it all together. The included 40 pin GPIO extender is nice in that it allows you to use the GPIO pins with the kit. There is also a four pin extender, a copper pillar, three silver M2 by three screws, 10 M2.5 by four flathead screws, the two FFC cables, and you'll only need one for the assembly, four copper standoffs, and the star of the show, the 52 Pi PoE and NVMe hat. You'll start the assembly process by installing the active cooler. Then insert one of the black screws through the bottom of the Pi and screw in the copper standoff. I didn't find it necessary to use the screwdriver for the standoff installation, but do make sure they are on good and tight. You will then repeat this process for all four standoffs. Now pull the black portion of the PCIe connector up to loosen the latch. The print in the included documentation is very small, and it wasn't obvious at first that the FFC cable needs to be installed in a specific way. The end labeled to RPi5 connects to the PCIe port on the Pi. The other end, labeled to hat, will connect to the connector on the hat. If you find the NVMe drive isn't working, the FFC cable is likely installed incorrectly. Insert the 2RPi5 in into the PCIe port, then push down on the black connector to lock it into place. Take the GPIO extender and line up the pins over the GPIO port. You can then walk it down on the left and right sides or use a screwdriver to help push it down on each end until the connector is flush on the Pi. Now we'll install the 4-pin header into the pins behind the Ethernet port, and this is what it should look like once done. Now take the hat and feed the 2-hat end of the FFC cable through the hole in the hat. Line up the GPIO pins through the connector on the hat, bring it down just a little bit, then underneath make sure the 4-pin connector is lined up with the holes on the hat. 
Once both connectors are lined up, you can bring the board all the way down flush with the standoffs. Flip the black latch on the white connector upward. Insert the two hat in into the connector, pushing it all the way. Then flip the black latch down to lock it into place. Now take the small black flathead screws and screw them into each of the four standoff locations. Insert the NVMe drive into the connector on the hat at a 40 degree angle, making sure it's pushed into the connector. Bring the drive down, then using one of the silver screws, secure it into place. If you find a piece of tape over the pillar, you can use the screwdriver to puncture it to make it easier to insert the screw. If you're using a different sized NVMe drive, you will need to adjust the pillar location. Now I'll insert the micro SD containing PyOS Desktop. If you need details on how to install PyOS Desktop to a micro SD, please check out the video above. Now we can connect the micro HDMI cable to the port nearest the USB-C port and plug in our Ethernet cable, which is connected to a PoE switch. You should see the LEDs on the hat light up and the front LED on the Pi will turn green. We can now connect a keyboard and a mouse to the USB 2.0 port and complete the software setup. With Pi OS desktop loaded, we'll enable the PCIe port on the Pi 5. Open a terminal by pressing Ctrl plus T or clicking the icon on the taskbar. Then we'll change the directory to the firmware folder by typing cd space forward slash boot forward slash firmware. We'll now edit the config.txt file by typing sudo nano config.txt. Move down below the comments and enter dtparam-pcieex1. This will set the PCIe port for Gen 2 speeds. If you're sure your NVMe drive can run reliably at PCIe Gen 3 speeds, you can instead use dtparam equals PCIEX1 underscore Gen equals 3. Once done, press Ctrl and X at the same time, Y, and Enter to save the config.txt file. Next, we'll enable auto detection of the PCI Express port and allow booting from the NVMe drive. Type sudo sudo rpi eeprom eprom config dash dash edit. Move to the bottom of the file and then enter PCIe underscore probe equal one. And then on the next line, boot underscore order equals zero x f 416. And just to note, the letters X and F must be lowercase. Again, press Ctrl and X at the same time, Y, and then Enter to save the file. You'll then see that the update was successful. Now we can reboot the Pi. While the Pi is rebooting, if you haven't already, I appreciate your support by subscribing to the channel. It lets me know that this kind of content is of interest to you. Now, let's proceed. On boot, you may see a message that the power supply is not capable of supplying 5 amps of power to peripherals and will be restricted. I haven't had any issues thus far, but want to make you aware of it. I want to quickly mention a few things. If you'd like to install a different OS to the NVMe drive, you can use Raspberry Pi Imager to download and install it to the drive. Also, if you'd like to clone your micro SD card to the NVMe drive so you don't need to go through the setup again, under Accessories, click the SD Card Copier application. For the Copy from Device option, select the micro SD card, which will include MMC in the path. For the Copy to Device option, select the one with NVMe in the path. Then, click the Start button. If you're okay with the contents of the NVMe drive being erased, Click the Yes button. The SD card will then be copied to the NVMe drive. Once done, click OK. Close out of the SD card copier and shut down the Raspberry Pi 5. You can now remove the micro SD card. When you press the power button on the Pi 5, 
it will now boot from the NVMe drive. If you're going to use a case with this hat, one I recommend is the GeekPi Aluminum Case by 52Pi. The instructions are very easy, but there are a few things that aren't exactly clear about the assembly, so this part of the video may save you some time. In the package we have another active cooler, which we can set aside, two rubber pads, and a hardware pack. The case housing is all aluminum, including the bottom panel, and there are plenty of ventilation holes surrounding the pie to keep it cool. The top portion of the case is an acrylic panel. There are four aluminum legs that will keep the pie in place, but before we can install it, we need to remove the four screws on the bottom of the pie 5. Now using four of the copper standoffs, screw them into the four locations on the bottom of the pie. To assemble it, take the pie 5 and hat and gently place it inside the base using the ports to guide the orientation. Now take the metal plate and place it flush over the bottom of the pie with the beveled areas of the screw holes facing you. Now install and screw in four of the black flathead screws into the bottom four holes then give it a quick look to make sure that all the holes and connectors line up. Remove the protective backing from the acrylic top panel on both sides. Place the panel over the top of the case and using the Allen wrench and four hex screws, tighten the acrylic panels down on all four corners. I found it easier to start with the longer end of the Allen wrench to get the screws started then use the shorter end to tighten each one of the screws. Once all four screws have been added, flip the case over, remove the protective backing from the rubber pads, and place them over the indented area on the case and over the screws. This will keep the case from sliding around on your desk. That's it! We're done with the assembly, and you can now begin enjoying your new PoE hat with the NVMe drive. I hope you enjoyed this look at the GeekPie P33 M.2 NVMe PoE Plus hat and the aluminum case for the Raspberry Pi 5. I've shared how I'm using this case, but how are you or will you be using it? Let me know in the comments below and share your thoughts. If you found this video helpful, please let me know by clicking the like button. And if you enjoy learning about technology, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. And with that, I look forward to talking with you again very soon.